the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. Once again, I'm TJ Osmocuti Sanders, and I'm joined with Fro Dan the Man Dan. How's it going? Well, it's not every day when people go full name in you, so mm -hmm. it's, I must be in trouble, TJ. Yes, you Am are. Am I in trouble? You are in trouble. You're in trouble because you tried to kill me with that sword. I did try to, but I had to take out my frustrations, TJ. The end of that series was not the prettiest, um, but hopefully this series can turn it around. You know, we have Silent Storm versus Domdus. I considered both these guys, uh, oh, I, you know, maybe not necessarily like that far ahead, but I definitely consider them in higher regard than I do uh, Corn Echo and Luffy in terms of play. I think yeah. uh, these guys are really sharp. Uh, they rarely make huge misplays, um, and I think Silent Storm, sometimes he plays a little bit quick. Yeah. But I think that's going to be a good change of pace. Both those guys, Luffy and Corneco, really have to think through some really tough turns, long and hard, and as a result, roped uh, a couple of times where it was like, well, the, the play might be a little obvious, uh, but you know, still it's one of those like scenarios where you have to weigh all your options. Silent Storm's not going to do that. He's just going to be like, well, I play really quick, and I'm also going to be playing Priest. Yeah. And Paladin and Rogue. No Hunter, no Warlock, no, no warrior. Druid, no Warrior. Yeah, this is like going as far against the grain as you could possibly go. Even Shaman has been more popular over the course of like the last week of the Legendary Series than these three classes, than like Paladin or Rogue, for example. Soundstorm is also the player that we've seen the most on the Legendary Series. We saw him in Season 1 make it two weeks um, in two of the match day weeks last season. He also made it to the season one finals where he won. And then we, saw, of course, saw him earlier in the season in season two. Now we're seeing him again. He's always fun to watch because he always brings crazy decks. Dominus, on the other hand, um, we saw him in the last week of the Legendary Series season two. And he had a decent performance. Uh, he broke the mold by bringing Paladin in his week. Uh, but I believe he eventually lost to... Raynad, which ended up being sort of his kryptonite. Raynad went on to yeah. win uh, the the whole tournament, but I'm sure Domnus was upset because Domnus actually 3-0'd every other opponent besides Raynad. So right. it was it yeah, was it was, was a really, really it was a really interesting uh, set of matches. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys have in store for us. I'm looking forward to Silent Storm, man. This this guy is so exciting to watch. And what's really cool is that he always brings his own deck styles too. Even if he's bringing something popular, he'll like throw in Toshly and Druid. And you're like, what? Mm -hmm. And it just happens to be really good and works out okay. Uh, the guy's an innovator. He's a strong technical player. He plays fast. And he also makes legendary interviews. <laughs> I want Silent Storm to come back. That, I think yeah. he's one of the best players in the entire region. It's really cool that Tiddler, Tiddler Celestial picked that up on his team. Yeah, it's also... Uh, the variety of decks that he's able to play by having lots of resources in both the North America and the Asian mm -hmm. scenes uh, is a really big benefit to him because he also he plays primarily on North America, has practice partners in North America, but then he also has his team, with, which with Tiddler Celestial um, has a lot of um, Asian contact. So uh, he's got a, a wide variety of, of deck lists that he can play, wide variety of deck lists that he chooses to bring. He's a cool dude. Yeah, I guess so. Meanwhile, Dom, this... No Paladin for him today. That was no. like the deck where I thought it was like a little weird that he brought Paladin, but he made it work. Uh, Paladin was definitely not the the weak link in his lineup. Instead, today he's got more of a traditional Druid, Warlock, and Warrior. Opting not to bring the Hunter, but it's okay. Druid's still a pretty decent choice. Now, I wonder what Silent Storm is targeting, because obviously he's the talk of the town right now. He has such a weird lineup, but it has to be singling something out, right? Like he wants to beat Hunter, maybe, or maybe Warrior. Maybe the priest against warrior, paladin against warrior. No, rogue's just bad. Like what? What's what's going on in his head? I I need to know, TJ. I don't I need know. To know now. It, it's really hard to um, say because out of the the only one that I can think might be the one he's targeting is like Zoo, because these three decks have mm -hmm. decent matchups against Zoo. Mid range pally can can do things against Zoo with early swing cards like Muster for Battle and Shield of Mini Bot, which can go a long way. Rogue, of course, we talked about that matchup quite a bit earlier, but Rogue is one of the stronger ones against Zoo. And of course, Priest has classically been considered one of the one of the counters to Zoo. And um, <laughs> Froden's pointing and laughing at my notes for, for Raynad and saying one of, <laughs> one of Raynad's accomplishments is being top two out of two in a show match with Savitz. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why did you write that down? That's, top top that's, two in a show match. That's, out of two. That's literally listed on his his Liquipedia page. It's because he, like, he got under his accomplishments. He got a money out of it. That's why. Like they list it because it's his prize earnings. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at Paladin versus the Druid. Already, weird stuff happening. That's a hogger. Yep. What's he gonna throw next? A sea giant in his deck? How did you get to Sea Giant? Well, because he has Mustard for Battle <laughs> okay, Hogger. Okay, That's yeah. like a bunch of tokens. Yeah. I would think, like, Nat Pagel. That, that seems less plausible than Sea Giant. I Nat thought Pagel. Nat well, Pagel, I think, would be good, would be good in War Rogue. But that's a conversation for a different day. I had a dream about it. But that's also a conversation for a different day. Yeah, sure. All right, well, uh, nothing to start things off, but Mustard for Battle is usually a pretty problematic card for Drew to deal with because they can't keep up with uh, the tempo that's gained through Quartermaster on the coin. And uh, that's going to be difficult. I'm already a little bit more amped up this series, <laughs> TJ, because I'm starting to see some exciting stuff. We get to see Paladin, man. Yeah, I found it. He's countering Druid. It was oh. a Chinese Light Bomb Priest. All three of those decks are really strong against Druid. Yeah, that's fair. It could be possible. I don't know. And it's, it's, hard to, does have Druid. it's hard to peer into the mind of Soundstorm. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mustard for battle. And now, of course, Domnus is really hoping he draws Swipe. If he doesn't draw Swipe, he's going to have a bad time. Because yeah. he's going to have at least two 3-3s. Three mm -hmm. Maybe even more. And even just if there's two 3-3s, three that's a big swing in momentum. Because that's just... Um, would that essentially be four, six, nine worth of stats for five mana with just two, um, two of those guys on the board? Oh, sorry, five, eight worth of stats with just two of those guys on the board, which is pretty ridiculous for five mana. Hmm. Well, then, do you reveal the shade? I guess that's the big question. You know your opponent has a coin, so you have to reduce it. The shade could kill two of those recruits. If you don't, and your opponent has Choose Sword Champion, you're gonna, just going to be holding the shade anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so if you attack into this 1-1, one, one, they should deny him quarter master value. If not, then it's like, well, he's got three 3-3s three, on the board, and you just lost an insane amount of board presence. This is why the threat of Quartermaster sometimes is just greater than Quartermaster itself. Yeah, you don't even need to have a Quartermaster in your deck for that to be... It's the same with Druids and Combo. Like, even nowadays, where you see Ancient of War... You can't even put your opponent on not having combo. It's something you always play around even if the Druid doesn't have it. Well, now he's got a pretty firm control. Six power on the board, answering whatever comes out here. So even if Druid Claw comes out, he should be able to start setting it up. Swipe one card too late. Poor Dom this. Oh, man. Slightly awkward. Just really slightly. Awkward. Seems like... Swipe's like, I heard you need me. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Seems like Drew the Claw is the most reasonable option here. Maybe Lotheb as well. Lotheb would make both uh, minions trade into it. Then it's susceptible to True Server Champion. Yeah, that's true. Drew the Claw is the one more in punt the full bounce, though. And it would force your opponent to at least take a little bit of damage, which is good. Mm-hmm. But Midrange Paladin has sort of been out of the meta for a while, and people sort of forget about its strengths in a lot of these matchups. But um, it can build up a lot of pressure early on with cards like Muster for Battle, Quartermaster, and even just sticky threats like yeah. Shield of Minibot and Piloted Shredder. It doesn't feel like it makes much sense to even throw in some of the weird tech cards. Like, let's play Hogger, where my opponent can get another Grim Patron off of my Knoll. But... It's really good against Hunter. But then I get another Null next turn. It's true, but he gets another Grim Patron in turn after that. Mm. Ooh, quite the quite the conundrum. Sticky situation. I mean, I have to imagine that it's tech against Hunter. Yeah. Because it's really good against the aggression. Maybe it's his best way to answer stuff like Zoo, too, as opposed to other things. But I know some people have been tossing in really interesting stuff in their defensive control-ish decks, like Sunwalker, for example. Mm -hmm. How are you going to use Grim Patient to get past the Sunwalker? It's possible. You're really not. <laughs> no. Y y even if they inner rage, it's like they have to use both of those to suicide in, the Grim Patient just gets stopped. So it's interesting to see how some of these people are differentiating on how they're attacking the metagame from different points. 
Give me Silent Storm. She's going for the style points. Style Storm? Style Storm. Yeah. Stylent Storm. Hmm. Mm. Well, the Lothab does answer the Sludge Belch. The thing about Drew of the Claw is that your opponent, if he has Chew Silver, answers so easily with the Quartermaster, which is officially topped out in, in stream value. And not only buffed up two of your 3-3, three, three, or one of, yeah, your 3-3 three, three, so that way you can kill off the Shade, but it also allows you to trade efficiently into this Drew of the Claw, which normally True Silver Champion struggles a little bit. And you get to set the Shield to Minibot. Yeah. Strong turn to plays. Now, the one thing I... You talked about the tech cards of mid-range Paladin. Um, but the thing that I want to know the most is how many, like, control sort of S cards is he running? Like, is he running uh, any Iron Beak Owls? Is he running, like, um, one equality or two equalities? I think those are pretty big deals in the current right. meta. Because if you look back at when mid-range Paladin first got sort of that, that surge right after Mustard for Battle was released, when... Um, it was eating up decks like before the oil rogue phase sort of came into play. It was the meta was not as slow, I guess, as it was now. There wasn't as many like control warriors, hand locks, right? Um, and so you could get away with playing one equality. Well, uh, I I think the equality, like one equality, is definitely standard. Two would surprise me. Um, yeah, I, I think two would is not also out of the question though, considering that it's really powerful against Grim Patron. Yeah, Let and handlock, and handlock, and well. potentially druid. True. Another thing too is I know some people were really thinking about some weird stuff like having spell power in your deck, so that way you can kill off mm -hmm. with consecration, like Thalnos consecration. Yeah. yeah, that's why a lot of people on paper were thinking, "Oh, Dragon Paladin's going to be fantastic. It's a great call for the meta because you can Azure Drake for three mana after Dragon Consort and then consecrate." to clear a whole board of Grim Patrons on turn eight. But it hasn't worked out like that. Yeah, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending how you want to look at it. Unfortunately. Yeah, I know you're a big fan of dragons. Dragons are pretty sweet. <clears throat> so it's cool that you go for a big tempo play, but how much damage is these boot bombs going to do? Whoa! Maximum damage. Oh, Dom just does a nod. Okay. Uh, but that's... Oh, that's really scary considering the choose over champion is a lot of damage. Uh, there is a Harrison Jones though waiting, so Harrison can stop the second half of the choose over. Soundstorm realistically might just go for it. Might Juggler. Just, I mean, he could just build up a bot. board here. Yeah, sh Juggler shield the mini bot. And uh, the pilot shredder is also really intimidating to deal with. Yeah. Because you know that he's seen a swipe here. Uh, he knows that the possibility to remove a lot of those small little threats like that is going to be really no tough. Okay, going for just the straight up strongest play available to him. Sylvanas 5-5-2-2. Five, five, two, two. How do you dig yourself out of this one? Is there any way that he can even survive? Scenarius, he... Scenarius is uh, gain... No, he just dies of Consecration. Dies of Consecration. And he hasn't seen one yet, so that's risky. Um, so he's just going to swipe. Oh, double BGH. Yeah, he's playing two big game hunters. He's predicting the hand locks. Yeah. There's usually a little bit of wiggle room with the four, or sorry, three mana uh, tech cards, or three or four mana tech cards with Druid. You can usually fit in a second BGH, a Mind Control tech, or like a Kazan Mystic. Silent Storm has lethal. Got True Silver Champion Consecration, and that burst combination is just enough to end the game. Those boom bots were deadly. They were exactly the damage yeah. you needed to end the game. Yeah. Dominus is probably pretty upset about that. Tough yeah. break. I feel like Dominus is definitely one of the guys who's gotten the worst end of sticks oh, of yeah. the RNG staff. Mm -hmm. Definitely true. Like. I remember so many times where he got a lot of bad rolls. And still won. And still won. Yeah. <laughs> in this series. It was actually ridiculous. It's hard to overcome things like that. But right. Silent Storm's going to take a win with the Paladin. Pretty quick victory. A lot thanks to Dr. Boone, but can't always count Man, on the Paladin doing getting the damage. win. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and toss it out there. Can Priest win in this series? It, it can beat the Druid for sure. 
Um, not necessarily like a, a guaranteed favorite, but it's it definitely is a deck that you can take out. But uh, what about everything else here? The Warlock and the Warrior. Depends what kind of priest it is. We don't really know with Soundstorm. If it's like a the Chinese Light Bomb priest, then I think it does pretty well against Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah, I have to imagine it leans towards that as well because of the association with Tiddler. Yeah. Now that he's more plugged into the Chinese scene, maybe Tiddler gave him a really good deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a possibility that it's more like a creature heavy, like the, I don't even know, Kalentos. Uh, priest version that we saw a couple weeks ago from him. Sure. Um, but that's sort of fallen out of favor because it doesn't do quite as well against decks like Grim Patron Warrior. Um, but we'll have to see. It is going to be tough for uh, Priest to take out Warlock in almost any fashion just because yep. a lot of times Priest, people have always considered Priest one of the counters to Zoo, mm -hmm. but Zoo has a lot more ways to sort of blow out the game nowadays than they did. And it's still uh, true that Sometimes the removal from Priest just doesn't line up. Uh, sometimes they just don't draw into the removal that they need. It's a very reactive sort of class. It's been re uh, The reactiveness has been reduced with cards like uh, uh, Velen's Chosen, where you can get early bodies out and stop damage that way instead of relying on multiple card combos. But it still can be a tough matchup. This is going to be Druid versus Rogue, though. So we are going to see what kind of Rogue Sandstorms bring in here. We can presume it's a well Rogue. But Chalky switched things up yesterday, so it's a possibility. I have to imagine that it is Oil Rogue from Silent Storm. I'd be really surprised if it was anything else. The Aggro Rogue in general felt like a Chalky special. Like, it's something that he would do. Yeah. But it's not something that a lot of players would agree with him on. Well, is there I any other type of Rogue? Dragon Rogue? Dragon Rogue. I personally would love Mech Rogue, but it seems like it's not going to be that case. He's got Prep Sprint. Mm -hmm. Something that you could even fathomly keep against Druid because it's like a turn four play. I wasn't sold on Mech Rogue when he first started to talk to me about it, but after playing with it over the past couple of days, I think it's really strong. What are, what's your record with Mech Rogue? Right now? Uh, six and one. Six and one. It's a small sample size, but i say that's pretty good. Yeah, on the Legend Ladder for North America. Yep. Not bad. Keeps only the SI7 agent, wants the actual four drops instead of the draw into the four drop. Yep. He's on the coin. I always cool. like to see that as a rogue player. Mm -hmm. Extra card's pretty clutch. Coin activator, and that's the card he was looking for. Violet Teacher, very powerful against Druid. Druid has the swipe. But more importantly, Drew doesn't have a turn to play. That wild growth would have been would have been excellent. Yeah. He's still got a decent curve. But Keeper of the Grove is sort of a situational four drop, so it can't really be considered like a traditionally good curve. Because there is there might even be a likelihood that he doesn't even use the keeper. This is also a really strong play. Now that he can't play the shade of Nax Ramus comfortably, because if he uh, fan of knives, then he just kills it off. So this is encouraging Domdis to skip his turn by hero powering down the 1-1. One, one. Or call his bluff. Or call his bluff. Hmm, I wonder. Domdis really now weighing his option. Here's, a, here's another troubling thing. If Domdis hero powers down, he's l waited long enough and agonized to the point where Silent Storm can make a read like he has shade for sure. Yeah. He's mousing over the same card. Yeah, I still think Shade, playing Shade's okay. You don't usually don't keep Phantom Knives against Druid. It's just rare to have it. But if he does have the Shade and he Phantom Knives, that's a blowout opportunity. Like, you just possibly lose too much board presence. And he just goes for the conservative wow. play. And now Silent Storm gets Violet Teacher on the board preemptively and can't get answered. That is really, really bad news. Mm hmm Or does he go? Is he going to play a three drop instead? Because now he has a backstab with the Drake. That's also really good. If he plays a three drop here, if he made the read that that was Shade and X Ramus, if he plays a three drop here, it makes a really hmm. interesting turn for Domdus again, where he has to decide to play Shade, flow to, th flow to mana, or like Wrath it if he would have that instead. I still think Via Teacher is okay because you have Deadly Poison now, so then you can like. Deadly Poison backstab and get guaranteed K 
kill anything on the board with that much damage. Yeah. Coin five teachers is like super strong. Yeah. Mm. It's not too scary for Dondas because he does have swipe. Right. He might even consider silencing this teacher. But that's yeah, like you don't, don't have know. any you don't have many silence targets in, in Drew. Uh, that's Ro true. Uh, Other Van than Van Cleef. Cleef. Yeah. Hmm. Because you've already been through Blood Mage Thanos, which is probably the other one. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm much more in favor of silencing this Violet Teacher than just playing Shade. Because most likely, he's going to have to play something else, and then Shade trades into it anyways, because it has to attack, and then Violet Teacher starts getting 1-1 one, one tokens. Hmm. I wonder. Are you really afraid of the 1-1 one, one tokens? That you have Swipe? That's a good point. Maybe he's not afraid of it, because he has Swipe. Next turn's a weird turn in the fact that if a lot of 1-1 one, one tokens are made, he can't Swipe and Hero Power. For no, one. no, I think you're actually really right on the point there. Why should he be afraid of the one ones if he has swipe? Because he's not going to get immediate value out of those things. They're going to die eventually. He's not trying to protect anything on his board from one ones. Just a bunch of violet apprentices running at you, poking you with sticks. Yeah. Doesn't precisely. hurt that much. Hmm. So I guess because you don't really have that many clean ways to address board, you're expecting Pilot Shredder or something. You just play a three drop here. Yeah. This side has a bigger impact as the game goes on. Bars here just ends up coming out healing for him. Pilot Shredder would have been okay last turn, but yeah. it, it turns out his opponent had the perfect answer with deadly poison and backstabs. I like the Savage Roar here. Savage Roar is a clean removal of everything on the board. Wonder. And you can set up your, you set yourself up for uh, Emperor Thorsa next turn. The one thing is that uh, how juicy would it be to reduce Savage Roar in your hand with Emperor Thorsa, but you're not guaranteed to even have a safe turn to do that if you don't clear off the board here. I mean, you could also find the middle ground with the uh, the Keeper of the Grove. Whoa. She's just setting up a strong swipe. Okay. Well... If I have a Silent Storm, I think I'm pretty I'm pretty tuned in to the swipe here. Might just <laughs> Oh you think? <laughs> yeah. So I guess you can just play the Drake then. But the Drake also plays into the swipe. His opponent tacks into Violet Teacher with the 4-4, swipes the Drake. This is a very actually advanced play from Domdis. To like line this up so that way it disincentivizes his opponent doing anything. Maybe he just uses backstab SS seven agent and dagger, mm -hmm. because then it like plays less into swipe. Imagine if Dom just made this play and he didn't have swipe. Can you imagine like how crazy that'd be? Just like for, to go next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These guys are definitely responding a lot though to each other's tells and reads. I I like this I so far a lot. Ha, this guy's toast. Sneaking a little bit more damage. Get the weapon out so that way Deadly Poison and Drake is a viable play next turn. And this makes it so. Ah! I guess he has Dr. Boom. So he can swipe here and set up for a Dr. Boom next turn. Emperor Thorsen is going to sit in that hand for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's got two swipes. Right. So swipe and attack in. He's not developing anything on the board. I wonder if you can Thorson here, because he's clearly played around the swipe now. Yeah. And next turn... You can take a lot of damage next turn. He just fresh daggered up. If he, that's true. If he deadly poisons yeah. and, too much damage and tinkers, then that's way too much damage. You're right, you're right, you're right. Just thinking, I was just thinking out loud. Okay. Fair enough. You're allowed to do that. I'll allow it. Thank you, Senpai. <laughs> The Sonic Storm will definitely take this out. He's got Drake to start drawing cards. Maybe even force out a Wrath or Swipe again. Yeah. There's the Tinkers. Thomas has taken some residual damage so far this game. He's at about 22 health. He's not in any danger. I think he just popped down Dr. Boom. Yeah, Boom is problematic. Leaving the Drake up, though, is also problematic. Yeah, but if he plays a swipe, then he's doing nothing else. It's true. Well, if it's not Dr. Boom, then it's Ancient of Lore. That's the only two real plays here in this turn. Yeah. 
And one of these boom bots could deal with that Azure Drake. The thing is, like, you can just play via Teach. Oh, man, via Teach, you're fan of knives. And then... Oh, wait, I guess he, he doesn't have enough mana to sap as well. Hmm. I'm saying the boom bots might be able to absorb stuff. If he wants to take seven damage, right. potentially more with the boom bots. Yeah, just sap. Just sap, sap yeah. yeah. Attack with the Drake first, and then uh, attack the 1-1. One -one. Make him lose tempo. Yeah, and I mean, the, the tempo gain from a play like this is pretty huge. Like, he has to spend either his turn. Uh, a point that you made earlier was Druids don't do multiple things every turn. They either spend their turn removing or they spend their turn building their own board. It's really hard to do both as a Druid player. Right. And so, by sapping Dr. Boom here, he gains so much tempo that and puts a, uh, a threatening enough board that Domdis will have to either remove this turn or build up a board this turn. Well, he's got a play to swipe the Vile Teacher and then boom bot into the 3-1 and hope to God that you can snipe that Drake 50% and the 50%. Yeah. So it's a 50-50 on hitting the Drake and it's a 50-50 on killing it. And then uh, you can play Pilot Shredder. That would be the ideal scenario. Yeah. The other scenario... I can't really think of another one that's like that could work out as good as this. Yeah, you can swipe in Wrath. It's true. Oy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, he's gonna have the Wrath. Though. Yeah, uh, he could have judged his outcome. It looked like he picked up the Wrath, like he was planning on doing that either way. But if that had hit the Azure Drake, I mean, he would have had to Pilot Shredder. He's thinking about doing Pilot Shredder anyway. Well, he ran out of time actually. I don't think that's. He doesn't seem too comfortable about that play, does he by his expel? Hold on, hold on. How much damage is this? Uh, okay, not enough. No. But it's still a lot of damage if you just weapon up, deadly poison, sharp sword, oil, and then hit the face. It's 12 this turn. That is also a fan of nice for 3 damage, and you can guaranteed kill whatever comes out with the backstab. Oh, except I know you're trying. Alright. Fine. Works for me. Double Drake all the way, pushing for damage, and once again, Rogue way ahead of Druid on the tempo. Next turn, he has 10 damage just from hand. With um, Dagger Up, Deadly Poison, Tinkers, and Eviscerate. So if just one of these Drakes survives, he is dead. And there's no... What? The only way that he would survive here is if he Wrath and then healed with Ancient of Lore. But how hard is that to see? How much damage? He might Doctor Boom in Wrath. Yeah. How much damage could you put your opponent on having if you leave them with an Azure Drake and nine mana? Hmm. Well, uh, you have 15 it, health. It's to the point where he could oil and flurry. So yeah. if he did that, he would have eight, eight damage plus the oh no nine damage because the uh, the spell power plus the three that's thirteen, and that's eight mana. So, yeah, like it's pretty hard to pass up this Dr. Boom because you don't think you could die just from the oil flurry. Now, if you had deadly poison and the flurry, then it's like, yeah, you die. Yeah. He's been struggling to find the the option that he wants on these turns. Boom it's box, difficult. Boombot set it up so if you draw Force of Nature and somehow these Boombots survive, you could end up killing him. But that is it. Yeah, that's lethal. Weapon up, oil, sharp sword oil, and eviscerate. That's nine mana exactly, too. Yeah. And actually, he doesn't... No, yeah, he would still need it. Yeah, he needs eviscerate for sure. It's yep. just enough first. I think he has not by a couple points, though. Yeah. So that wraps up uh, game number two. Sonstorm is up 2-0. Rogue and Paladin. He's about to... Go maybe even 3 0 with Praise, but Bombus definitely has to stop this pain train, and I think he might queue it up with uh, his hand lock if, he's, if he has it. Yeah, but Sonstorm's in a great position. He's given himself three opportunities to find a win with Priest. So I'd imagine he could at least beat one of these decks. Sure. And he's, uh, he's confident enough to bring the Priest, so he does put it last. A lot of players will choose to put like their weakest deck last. Or what they perceive to be the weakest deck last, just right. so 
percentage wise. Uh, yeah. So they can um give themselves the most opportunities to get a, a, a win with their weakest deck given that they uh go up in a lead in the series. Same thing that Chalky did yesterday with the rogue. It ended up not working out for him because in conquest, if one deck has a poor performance, then it it's a liability for the entire tournament. Because you have to win every single match. You have to win a game with all those decks in every single match. Mm -hmm. True. Um, loving the priest choice, though, although I'm worried whether or not it's actually good. What, what do you think? <laughs> all right, TJ, what kind of priest do you think it is? Is it control priest or is it Chinese priest? Is it mech priest? I is think it it's dragon priest. I think it's Chinese priest. What are the chances, TJ, that there's a dragon in this priest? Deck? Zero percent chance. Zero percent chance it's a dragon. Yeah. Zero percent chance is a dragon. Zero percent chance is a dragon. What about the chances that there's a mech in this deck? Highly likely. One hundred percent chance. So you think it's a priest a mech priest? No, it's a Chinese priest. They run anti kill bots. Oh you're right. I think it's a Chinese priest. If I had to make a, a guess. All the signs point to it. You mentioned earlier it was a good point. Um, with his team being Tidler involved Celestial. with Tiddler Celestial. Probably a light bomb priest. Yep, some variation of of that. It's great against aggro. Yeah. I, I mean I think it's also great against um like mid range. Sure. Maybe Sinus was targeting the hunters, the mid range hunters. Yeah, that's rogue. a that's a possibility as well. Yeah, rogue paladin and priest. Maybe yeah. they can all do it against it. Mm hmm What a funky lineup though. Yeah. The hybrid priest or the hybrid hunter that's been becoming popular that you were playing earlier in the day, I think so actually just tears apart rogues. Your soul shall be mine. Light of the Naru implies that it's just a regular control priest. Although it still can anything anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. The telling cards will be cards like uh, Death Lord, Velen's Chosen, Pilot right. Shredder, Light Bomb, Gilblin Stalker. Gilblin Stalker. Even though I have seen some like Control Priest, but in Gilblin Stalk, Gilblin, Gilblin, Giblin, the Stalker, Gilblin, Gilblin. <laughs> no. Yeah. Injured Blade Master is one of the ways, though, you can. Definitely seize control against handlock. Yeah. You get the Twilight Drake out before the Twilight Drake. Circle of Healing is a big tell. Circle of Healing means it's almost for sure control. control. This is going to be a tough matchup. He's got Power Word Shield, though, in this deck. It's interesting. Opts not to use the coin here. Instead, Injured Blade Master Circle of Healing. So he can take his time and, and coin out on other turns. Such a strong play. <laughs> He's going to use the Circle of Healing here. He will. It's much better than just coining out the Power Word Shield because it's <laughs> resilient against a lot of things. Yeah. And the Injured Blade Master Circle of Healing actually usually matches up against a Twilight Drake. Ooh, one card off from the Mountain Giant. It's interesting that Silent Storm tossed away the Shadow Word Death because he wasn't sure about the possibility of Zoo. It's it's not yeah it's not something you can afford to do you always have especially as priest you have to mulligan for zoo almost every time because the game oh that you, the game that you try and put him on being a handlock is the game that he's playing zoo and you have a useless shadow or death in your hand for most of the game right but now that drawing that Northshire cleric allows him to draw a card pyromancer not the most amazing card this matchup but might be helpful mm -hmm. sludge belcher would get punished pretty heavily by shadow madness. Yeah. He opts to play the Mountain Giant. Big, better play. At least tempo wise. Sylvanas. Whoa. All right. So, a couple options here. You can coin out the Sylvanas, which Sylvanas has a lot of really powerful usages later on, especially if you're the priest. Um, with things like you Shadow with Death, your own Sylvanas. Or you can heal up the injured Blade Master, attack in, then Light of the Naru it. To like bring it out of range of like mortal coil, bring it out of range of like dark bomb, and still challenges the mountain giant. Putting the pyromancer also means he kills the uh, he kills off yeah. the ancient watcher. But it makes it vulnerable to dark bomb. Yeah, yeah, but hellfire also kills his own giant. Yeah, that's true. It, does, it is vulnerable to dark bomb number two. He used one dark bomb already on the Northshire cleric. Was it likely that he has a second one? Yeah. Not as high. As uh, as it currently is right nope. now, hundred percent chance, because we know it. We do know it. 
Might as well so throw down the ooze. Unless it's Blinktron, Priest. Shadow Flame so that he can continue to press. It's a very cute play. Super cute. Ooh, Strinkmeister Cabal combination. That is really strong against Twilight Drakes in this matchup. Also Sludge Belchers. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like Sunstorm got called out on his uh, at his move, and Domdis as a result punishes really heavily. Harrison would come down, but must consider. Uh, you know that still might get challenged if his opponent picks up Mortal Coil. Or if his opponent had Farseer or something. Yeah. This is going to be a big swing, though. Because he's going to end up playing Sludge Belcher here. It's going to get stolen. And he's going to be able to take out the Mountain Giant. Yeah. It's going to get stoled. Sludge Belcher is the better play, but you're afraid of um, the Shadow Madness. So you would have to oh, kill yeah. off the, uh, the Harrison. Wonder. Yeah. It's because whether or not you want to play around just Shadow Madness right. or play around Cabal. And he has both. Cabal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No matter what you do. Yeah. Twilight Drake is also like the more powerful tempo play. It's just a bigger minion. Yeah. But it, it's about to get stolen. Mm -hmm. Anything you do. I wonder. <laughs> oh, dang. But he does have the uh, Iron Beak Owl. Yep, that is true. I'd be gal, but he'd have to use like a two card combination to play to kill his own card. Yeah, but you definitely do it. Yeah. And being able to kill this mount or mountain giant without having to use Shadow or Death. Opens up opportunities for him to use Shadow or Death. Later on in the game to kill molten giants, or maybe use it a little bit more creatively to uh, steal a creature with uh, your own Sylvanas. Well, speaking of Sylvanas, uh, might be the best play here, considering that the Drake probably won't die for a while. You might be able to take it back. Yeah. I wonder. It would be one turn away from him being able to Sylvanas Shadow or Death to steal right. his Sylvanas. It would also be a couple turns away from Mind Control. Yep. And you want to get value out of it before those things come down. Oh, for sure. So I would definitely say this is a Sylvanas turn. You could tap, too, and get away with it. Should be fine. Probably wouldn't recommend uh, silencing the Drake because that's the big complicated factor. You can even save it for something else. Got to be afraid of the Velen's double mind blast combination. That is true. Velen's with double mind blast or just one mind blast. 50% of the priests that we've seen all week have run Velen's. Half of them? No <laughs> Pretty crazy. One out of two. <laughs> This is problematic. Uh, yeah. It's the best way Can to you go. just death it and then just address whatever happens afterwards? Yeah, if he steals the Twilight Drake, then how do you address that? Oh, you're right. Mm. You can, like, attack in with the Twilight Drake, then shadow or death it. But that feels like a lot of wasted resources. If you attack into it, Or just ignore it for now. Ignore it and just charge phase and go YOLO. I, I yeah. don't know about Hope, that. I mean, he does have his own Shadow, Sylvanas Shadow or Death. So if he ignores it and then goes face and can address. I have no time for that's this. true. Technically, it goes second, but his opponent does have uh, the Sylvanas. Uh, silence for the Sylvanas with double Molten Giant. Whoa! Okay, this is going to be a huge play this turn of some kind. Unless yeah. he's already planned it out. Double Molten. Silence. Yeah. Twilight. Are you afraid of Light Bomb, though? No. I don't know if you want to put your opponent on having so. Light Bomb. I don't think so. You haven't seen Death Lord or Valence Chosen or anything like that. You've seen Circle of Healing. Yeah. So Silence that. I guess he wanted to play the Drake first, but he could have... I think he's fine with this. Yeah, he can guarantee that he gets a steal on one of the more important creatures with the either the Twilight Drake or the Cabal Shadow Priest. 
And he's going to be able to get Mount, uh, Molten Giants out here, and then he has Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus is one right. of the strongest cards against Priest, especially classic control Priest. Oh, he stole the Drake. Back. <laughs> that was his Drake to begin with. I mean, this is a really tough matchup for Priest. How are, how are you supposed to overcome this in the first place? I think Double Molten Sludge Belcher is okay. Oh, no, no, no. Shadow Madness might destroy you. <laughs> he has to uh, Sun Fury here. In the next turn, Soundstorm has a lot of reactive cards here. It's got a lot of interesting things that you can do, but none of those are going to be able to get through this big of a wall. And he's at 16 health, so if he doesn't address it, he's just going to die. Oh man. He drew the Shrinkmeister a little bit too late. So he can Shadow or Death one of these uh, Moltens. Right. Uh, they'll be left with. Uh, 16 damage exactly on the board. Mm -hmm. Then he would have to Shadow Madness must consider. or Shadow or Pain just to survive. All right. Shrinkmeister, the uh, the Drake. Shadow and Madness. Shadow Madness. Oh, just uh, Shadow or Pain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's too bad that he couldn't utilize uh, the Shrinkmeister with Shadow Madness to potentially push for lethal, but he still has it next turn. If his opponent plays Sludge Belcher. He dies. But he most likely will just uh, trade, trade, and Jaraxxus. Yeah. You face and that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back here. You usually have, with classic control priests like this, you usually have one window to beat the handlock mm -hmm. at any given time. And basically that window is you hoping that your opponent doesn't have, like, any uh, one of however many cards that just completely stops you in your tracks. And Draxus just happened to be the answer right there. And he had many opportunities to draw into it. Draxus is usually the card that when it comes mm -hmm. down and you're the priest player, it's basically game over. As long as you're If he draws Shadow or Death, though, is there still a chance? I th think so. If he plays Nefarian and gets Sacrificial Pact. Whoa! Whoa! That is, that is the opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Nefarian Sacrificial Pact. TJ will quit casting <laughs> if that happens. I will eat my shoe, quit casting, and shove that sword into my leg. I'll be the one to If there's Nefarian the and he draws a Sacrificial Pact, I breathe a slight sigh of relief that that was an Arcanine <laughs> Soul Priest. He's got uh, 4, 6, 8, 10 damage if he was allowed to play everything. It's too much. Silent Storm. Taps out, and that is a 2-1 score. But Domdis, I mean, that was the matchup that he could target, right? If he couldn't yeah. win that game, it wasn't in the stars. But yeah. now going out, looking at the rest of it, the Priest versus the Druid, and the Priest versus the Warrior. Yeah. The important thing that you start off with the best deck, too, is you get information about your opponent's deck. Mm -hmm. So now that he beat the Priest, he knows what kind of Priest it is, what cards he has to play around. Two Shrink Meisters and Cabals and... All these other things, so he's getting information out. He knows Shadow Word Pain exists, too. Can the Priest take a victory? Against Druid, it definitely can. I think priest Control Priest against Druid is actually a pretty decent matchup for Priest. The Priest versus Control Warrior, yes. Priest versus Patron Warrior, maybe. I put a maybe on it, because Priest is good at dealing with the Patrons with Circle of Healing. Yeah. But it's... Bad if it doesn't have it, or if your opponent has Frothing Berserker burst from the hand, you can't really stop it as Priest. Yeah, that's true. But one thing that is cool is when you do like Shadow Madness plays on, um, you know, Grim Patron, and you and get your own Grim Patron, you get your own Grim Patron, and stuff like that. I was thinking of that earlier. Some decks, as a counter to Grim Patron Warriors, could just put in Grim Patrons of their own, and on a turn <laughs> where they think their opponent is going to set up Grim Patrons. They use their own Grim Patron. To deny them. Yeah. It's like Snipe, but better. Because you have your own patrons. Because you have your own patrons. Wow. Completely denies your opponent's patrons. Or you can just do Mirror Entity. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Because no. then the Warsong Commander comes out first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know. How about this? You play Mind Vision. Whoa! <laughs> and Thoughts. <laughs> Even better. And you take the cards <laughs> from their hand. You just one up to my idea. Yeah. With an even more bold idea. <laughs>
Priest versus Druid. Here we go. Can Silent Storm completely defy the odds here? Because we haven't had a successful Priest all week long. We haven't had a successful Priest in a really long time. Let's be real here. Priest is in a rough spot. The closest Priest to being successful that we've seen over the course of the Legendary Series was Kalento in the week that he won. The wild. Uh, played priest. We've seen more successful shamans than priests. Yeah, that's says true. a lot. Yeah, and shaman actually, at least has mech shaman. Yeah, and shaman has been uh, not wrecking, but in the games that it wins, it's been wrecking. Savit did pretty well with shaman. <gasps> oh my god, that's dirty. Okay, so the Northshire cleric baits out the wrath. Then you. Play Injured Blade Master 1, don't do anything. You Injured Blade Master 2 and circle healing. Yeah. That's got to be the play. And also, if he doesn't have a Wrath, right. then you just completely win the game. Right, but that, that's got to be the play. Yeah. The only way that could be made better is if he picks a Power Shield in the next mm -hmm. card and then secures the North Shack Cleric so that he can get a guaranteed draw card. Yeah. Pyromancer is also a little interesting considering that uh, it's board pressure but because it does a little bit of damage it weakens everything as well I like the board presence though yeah now all he has to do is pick up circle of healing number two and he really wants the wild growth he really wants the <laughs> wild growth Siki, what could possibly go wrong well, if I wild growth he knows exactly what could go wrong he could have two circle of healings, and this game is over. It's so hard to pass up the opportunity. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's not even just like a, a play thing or like a personal thing. It's like a cultural thing. Yeah. Druid players, since they were born, have it's been ingrained into their heads that wild growth is good. Wild growth on turn two wins games. Casters, players, and fans alike say, wild growth, so OP. And so Dom just is trying to fight his his natural desires that society has has branded into his brain right now and not wild growth and use the wrath instead. It's going to wrath. That's how difficult of a decision that is. It's, it's the right choice. It's the right choice and he makes the super tough call. And he's going to have to go throw up into a trash can. Now you play Injured Blade Master number one and tack and pass. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Domdis took the bait, too, with the Wrath. And now he's hating life. But he's going to Wild Growth, right? Or, or is he going to Keeper the Grove and dunk the Wild Pyromancer and then get completely overwhelmed? Wild Growth does set up two five drops, though, mm -hmm. into a coin Ancient of Lore. That's a two or three turn player play sequence. Yeah. He's wondering if he can withstand the pressure. The problem with this is that if he wild grows now, the injured blade master guarantees to be a 4-5 at the least. And then it trades into the Drake pretty well. So if he coins out the Keeper of the Grove, at least he can kill a minion and then keep that to be a 4-3. And he's about to get the bad oh, news. God. Imagine if he drew a North Shark right, Claire here. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North Shark Claire is much better. Yeah. Wow. It's gonna be one. I don't want to say this game is over, but this clay game is pretty darn close to being over. It's How do you bounce back from this if you're Druid? With four mana. Like, this is a 4 7 and a 4 5 right. on the board, and he's got four mana, and he now he's using the wild growth. Yeah. But the thing is, the sludge belt, like, if this was all Priest had. Maybe, maybe there's something. Yeah. Like if he draws Sylvanas. But yeah. such Belcher is really, really hard to deal with. Like if his hand was like mind control and. Ooh, he needs Sylvanas right now. Sylvanas is his last chance, I think. Otherwise, this game is just blowout. No, let's see. What can you do with Innervate? Not much. Drake into. No, Wrath would be just for damage. He could like Drew to the Claw. And BGH. Yeah. He could get out Ancient of Lore one turn quicker to try and draw into something that's going to save his life. Hmm. But Drew the Claw is not even that strong because he's just going to shrink Meister and then heal up and then just keep the tempo on board. He's taking 11 damage next turn. 
At least. No matter what. Actually, I argue that even if you choose Sylvanas, he just dies because the Sludge Belcher stalls for so long. Yeah. <laughs> All he needs is two turns what? swinging with just the creatures that he has on the yeah. board. Uh, th I mean, that's it. The, the injured Blade Masters with Circle of Healing is just, like, one of them is already problematic enough where you're like, you snowball the game, but two is ridiculous. Yeah, it may not look like it, but Silent Storm is a cold-blooded killer of the light. I mean, I think I would have gotten an idea from that with his name. This Innovate needs to pick up Naturalized. That's the only way he can win here. Wow. That is game over. 11 damage. Light of the Naru. So, why not just play Cabal Shadow Priest here? You can just Shrinkmeister, kill the Ancient of War. Light of the Naru. Heal up. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Actually, that Drake swipe might be really valuable. In the light's name. Can't use it. Needs an innervate. Yeah, exactly. So you're saying there's that, a chance. No, there is a chance that he can actually swing this right now. Mm. Nope. Okay. Lethal time, sitting time on to the board. Evaluate. Swipe your own shredder? You can't do that. You can't even target your own minion with swipe. All right, so let's see. If he clears off anything from the board, does he live? So 8, 11, hmm. 14. If he clears off the Light Warden. But then he's doing nothing else. So he's going to die the turn after that anyway. <sighs> I don't know. 17 damage coming the other direction. Yeah, it's true if you... If you play Drew the Claw, you might survive. Drew the Claw hero power. No, Drew, Drew the Claw in Wild Growth. To and, try. And pray that your opponent doesn't have a way to get past it easily. Yeah. Because then you can Drake swipe mm. next turn. Yeah. That actually might be the play. Drew the Claw, Wild Growth. He's really... He's looking at that Light Warden. He's like moused over his swipe and moused over his... Um, Drake could fetch for an Innervate. <laughs> we forgot about that. It might... I mean, desperate times yeah, yeah. calls for really desperate measures. Hi nope. Oh, and that's it. Dom, this is run has ended. Silent Storm goes to semifinals well with Priest. Yeah. And it seems like the mark of any Priest player is you do have to get one of those really big fast starts. In any matchup, when you're playing against Druid, you need the big tempo play with Circle of Healing. If you're playing against Aggro, you need to have that huge swing with the Arcanai Soul Priest uh, or yeah. the Pyromancers. He gave himself three chances to do it, and he only needed two. But Silence Arm, I mean, he played exceptionally well that series. And also, he brought decks that sort of broke the mold as far as the meta goes. I mean, we haven't seen a combination of those three decks in a long, long time in yeah. Conquest format. Pretty typical Silent Storm, too. So hipster with his deck choices. So yeah. uh, what happens, man? Well, the first three matches are done, so what's mm -hmm. the semifinals going to look like, TJ? Yeah, let's take a look at the bracket to see what's going to be coming up next. Uh, Roger versus Luigi's is going to be that first semifinal. Roger, of course, was the player that got a buy since he finished second place in his Legendary Series week. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, after that, we'll be seeing Korneko versus Silent Storm. And at the end of the day, we will crown... A winner. It's winner take all. The winner goes yep. to that season two legendary series land finals. I'm all looking at uh, Silent Storm versus Luigi's in the finals here. Uh, Roger's a solid, solid player, so yeah. I think he could definitely do it. But in terms of how Luigi's played in this first match, I'm feeling him, uh, and I think Silent Storm definitely comes in here as uh, with with some really good information on his side. He knows his opponent's playing Freeze Mage. That'll definitely help him in his upcoming matches. Yeah, it should be some good matches. We do want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for the legendary series season two, Plantronics and Gigabyte have hopped on board, and they're making all the fun stuff that we're able to do possible. They're letting Dan be here. They're Are giving, they? They're feeding Dan Are heads, they? headsets and motherboards. Doesn't sound very nutritious. No, not at all. But yeah, big shout out to those guys. If you guys want to support the Legendary Series and support Hearthstone Esports in general, let the sponsors know that you care about us and you care about them. Head to those links that you just saw on your screen and get some, some, some gear, some sponsor swag. Sounds good. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag HLS. You can also follow us on tw Twitter at ESL Hearthstone. Or you can tweet at me and Dan, at AsmoCutie for me, at FroDan 
for Dan. Of course, while we have these short little breaks that uh, they give us, we'll be trying to join in on those conversations as well. But the next matchup is going to be Roger versus Luigi's. What do you think about that? Uh, it's going to be fun. I think this will probably be one of the best matches of the day. I personally think both players are excellent. Uh, in their own regards. Definitely like a top caliber play. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go, we also want to remind you guys an opportunity to win some cool prizes through packs and headsets on the giveaway. Just go to the link below, esl.gg slash redemption series, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to get some cool free stuff. And that's just an opportunity to give back to the community because we recognize it's not always just about the players and us and putting on this yeah. cool stuff. Uh, we want to give back in some way. Awesome. All right. Well, the first semifinal of the day, Roger versus Luigi's. We'll return right after this break.